Hello, everyone. I'm really excited this morning to welcome back Dr. Paul Arciero, arguably one of the greatest nutritional researchers in the world for more than 38 years. He's now a full professor at the University of Pittsburgh the head over the sports medicine and nutrition department. And this morning, what we want to clear up is we want to clear up this whole controversy about diets and losing lean muscle mass and losing fat, et cetera. So welcome, Dr. Arciero. As, as I had mentioned pre previously, I got feedback from some people that had gone to Google Scholar wanting to debate me about the fact that it was ridiculous that people don't lose lean muscle mass on diets. Every study I've looked at, and you know that I'm very clear, I say I'm not the expert, but I'm an expert on the experts. You're one of the experts that I rely on. You're the one that taught me this. So can you please, from the research, and importantly, your, your two new peer-reviewed human trials, not to put words in your mouth, you told me 38 years you've looked for the silver bullet, you found it, you have the medical evidence behind it, and the fact when you ran the blood and the urine and the stool analysis, the results shocked you almost to the point where you thought, well, did we make a mistake? So I'll let you roll on that now. Yeah, thanks, Peter. I'm actually encouraged by what these others are saying on Google Scholar because they're probably referring to my research. <laughs> they're probably citing that, hey, listen, we have documentation in Google <laughs> Scholar that Dr. Arciero's research shows that you don't mean lose uh, lean body mass. In fact, the proportion of lean body mass goes up significantly. So I'm actually really encouraged because they're probably citing my research. But before my research, uh, in general, I don't think there's much debate. We know that it's been known for, gosh, the history of humankind, and at least over the last century, that you can lose weight, Peter, just about doing anything. We know that you can starve yourself, you can eat junk food, you can eat bean sprouts. You told me about the donut food, diet. The donut diet. <laughs> These are no surprises. Everyone knows this, that you can lose weight eat, drinking Coca-Cola, for goodness sakes. There's no surprise that losing weight is relatively easy for the majority of, the, of human beings. But what happens in those weight loss scenarios when they follow those fad extreme diets or just about any other diet, you're going to lose a significant amount of your lean body mass. That is no surprise. Go to Google Scholar and look it up and you'll see that when you undergo a weight loss, not with exercise. So I think maybe that's with their confusion too. Either that you've read my research and are citing that, or they have looked at studies that have incorporated an exercise component because exercise is somewhat protective of us losing lean body mass when we are undergoing a diet. But isn't it true that but, even with that, they're still losing lean mass? Yes. Muscle. Even with that, if they're not if they're not nourishing their body in the right way, absolutely. That combination of reduced calorie intake and exercise on a crappy diet, as most of them are, 99% of them, you're going to lose muscle mass. There's no denying that. Muscle, you can't out-exercise a bad diet. In your study, no one was allowed to exercise, and yet they gained 6 to 9% lean muscle mass. That had to shock you. Yes, yeah. The percentage increase in the lean body mass was startling, eye-opening to that degree, 9% in, the, in our one study, 6% in another, and in four weeks, 4% of a proportional increase in lean body mass. Those are phenomenal findings. I just want to be clear. It's not suggesting that people who follow the protein pacing, intermittent nutritional fasting, lose weight and gain muscle. We're not suggesting that, although some have. I've, we published some research that has shown that during a weight loss following the protein pacing, people had actually increased their lean muscle mass. So there's scientific evidence with research that I've published. But the majority of them will lose the majority of their body fat and particularly their visceral fat. That's not a mystery. That's well-known fat. And some maintain their lean body mass. Some will even increase a little bit. And yes, there will be some that will lose some of their muscle mass. But the overall mean of response is that these individuals are losing massive amounts of the majority of their body fat, particularly their visceral fat, which then results in an increase in their proportion of lean body mass. And that's the outcome you want, because in most cases, most studies are going to show a net reduction in your lean body mass because you're losing a significant amount of the lean muscle mass. So that's what we're trying to avoid, and that's what makes us different. To, to highlight, in eight yeah. weeks, you told me a reduction, startling, 33% of visceral fat, never seen before. You've studied almost every diet on the planet for 38 years. Here's the bottom line. Are you encouraged that we finally have found the silver bullet 
for weight loss, weight management, and more importantly, maintaining. That's something else I think that people don't understand, okay? Good. Let yes. alone the fact that blood pressure, blood sugar, cholesterol, triglycerides came down by almost 25%. In 30 days, an inflammation dropped by 25%. Please tell me any of the diet that these people want to talk about that even has anything that even resembles these results. Peter, at this point, we don't have one other than the protein pacing intermittent nutritional fasting. And that's just a fact. Not that I'm aware of. Now, again, research is coming out all the time. Yeah, uh, Eskimo maybe. diet will work. Who knows? I, I don't know. Maybe there's going to be a but new at, one. But at, this point, but at this point, the findings are compelling. They're novel. And they're groundbreaking in many ways in terms of what we're finding. Because we're finding these. We're discovering these massive improvements in health, which is of which weight loss and particularly fat loss and particularly visceral fat loss is just a side effect that the other health improvements outweigh everything else. They're phenomenal in terms of what has happened with their cardiovascular heart, their metabolic system, their inflammatory system, their gut microbiome. Across the board, their health improvement has been massive. Weight loss, in this case, fat loss and visceral fat is just a wonderful side effect. We haven't seen these results to this magnitude without incorporating an exercise or fitness component. And that's the defining feature of what we're discussing right now is that these people are undergoing these massive health improvements independent of any other lifestyle intervention, such as we all well know, an exercise intervention. So I think we can end with that and put it to rest that at this point right now, currently, the most optimal health improvement lifestyle that's focused solely on nutrition, the nourishment of the body, is on the protein pacing intermittent nutritional fasting. And I'll leave it at that. Let me close and say this. If you had a, a client right now that came to you and they wanted to get in the best shape of their life or lose weight, based on what you know, based on intermittent nutritional fasting and protein pacing, is there any way you would recommend any protocol? No, there would be no, there would be no, absolutely with 100% certainty. You're asking my professional scientific opinion of 38 years of being engrossed in this literature. No, there's nothing. And then when you add on, the exercise component, which we haven't even really talked about with the prize. Yeah, th this is second to none. <laughs> All right, Dr. Zero, thank you so much. You're welcome.